to Mason from the cavalry post. Let him in. Be careful what you say. Good evening, Captain. It's always a great pleasure to welcome one of the noble defenders of the Union. I know that's a very pretty little speech you're going to make, Mr. Haynes. But I happen to know that everyone here is a secession. Working for the Confederate cause. My credentials. Well, I'm very sorry, sir, but we had no way of knowing that you were a Confederate officer. Your uniform is that of us. It's fooled a lot of Yankees, too. <laughs> well, if we can be of any service to you. You can. We've got to do our utmost to keep soldiers here from being used as reinforcements for Grant's army. I'm going to need men to help me. We'll supply the men. And you can leave the rest to me. It's up to your department to do something about this situation in Colorado. It's becoming intolerable. Between the outlaws, the marauding Indians, and now the Confederate sympathizers, we're liable to be crowded out altogether. If we lose that territory, we may lose Texas and all the land as far as the Pacific. I think there's a solution to the problem, General. Yeah. All we have to do is to send a half a dozen regiments of cavalry to Colorado. Man alive. Don't you realize these are crucial times? Soldiers don't grow on trees. I don't think it's a question of men, General. What we need is just one man. A man who can find out who's back of all this recent trouble in Colorado. Once that's done, the thing's as good as settled. You've got it all figured out, haven't you? And now I suppose you're going to tell me that you know just where I can find a man like that. I believe I can. Who is he? Lieutenant Jerry Burke of the Military Intelligence. That name sounds familiar. It ought to. Twice you cited the lieutenant in your orders of the day. That's right. I'd like to talk to this young man. I'll have him come in. Burke, come in, please. General, this is Lieutenant Burke. The uh, general has something to discuss with you, Jerry. At ease, Burke. Lieutenant, what do you know about this trouble we're having in Colorado? Quite a bit, sir. It's been part of my job to cover all reports coming in from that territory. That's one of the reasons I recommend him, General. He knows more about that affair than any of us. It's a man-sized assignment, a sort of cleaning up of a big territory. Think you can handle it? I'd like to have a try at it, sir. I'm going to give you a chance. You will be given unequivocal authority for anything you may do, and you'll be responsible to the Commander-in-Chief alone. How soon can you start for Colorado? I'll be ready within the hour, sir. Goodbye, and good luck to you, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. I'm hurrying fast, I can't either. Fine way to talk to a man who fought and died for his country. Oh, you poor man. Were you wounded in the war? Was I wounded? Why, I got so many bullets in me at the Battle of Gettysburg, it's a mackerel I'm still alive. <laughs> the way I heard it, you got hurt falling off of that field kitchen cart you were driving. Oh, why another no field kitchen? Or a fodder wagon, that's what. I mean it. Never mind what you mean. Get those horses hitched. Here, there's the army payroll. Take good care of it. Yes, sir. Get in here. Come on, boy. Come on. I'm transferring to the Denver stage. Will I have time to get a cup of coffee before it leaves? You have ten minutes, ma'am. That's it. Thanks. Will you transfer my baggage for me, please? Still afraid some woman's going to hook you, eh, hey, Gabby? I'm choking out of this. Lieutenant Jerry! <laughs> I didn't expect to see you out west. I thought you'd be back with the troop by this time. Ah, uh, they wouldn't take me back after I come out of the hospital. Said it didn't have enough teeth. What are they doing now? Biting the enemy instead of shooting them? 
it. Where you heading for? Farther west. A little business to tend to. You know, farther west you go, the more dangerous it gets. How would you like to have somebody go with you that can shoot straight and sit a horse? You know, somebody to take care of you like I did when we sold you together? I know you'd be a lot of help to me, Gabby, but... Well, you wouldn't have enough time to get your things together before the stage pulls out. What do you mean, get my things together? Any time I button my coat, my trunk's packed. <laughs> Tim, time we was rolling. Coaches like this, ma'am? Usually. This isn't the safest place in the world to go galloping across country, young lady. Well, if I'd missed this stage, I wouldn't have been able to reach Denver before Sunday. Something awfully important must be taking you there. My wedding. A wedding? A wedding isn't worth risking your neck for. Tis to a woman. I never see one yet wouldn't break her neck to get herself a man. Lana Sanford. By the way, are you in relation to Henry Sanford, the editor of the Denver Press? Well, yes, he's my uncle. I'm going to live with him for a while. Do you know him? Why, I'm on my way there. He's just hired me to be his housekeeper. Why, you must be the anime he told me about. Oh, I'm so happy to meet you. Now I'll have at least one woman friend in Denver. Denver, eh? You think I ought to get off at the next stop? I ain't got no hankering to wake up some morning and find myself married. Take it easy, Pappy. I'll protect you. Beautiful scenery. Welcome to Denver, my dear. Thanks, Uncle Henry. John. Lila, darling, you don't know how I've missed you. Seems like two years instead of two months since you left Kansas City. Only two years? Seems like ten to me. Oh. What's the matter? It's, it's nothing. Oh. Happy, darling. What do you think? I can't think of anything except that in three days I'll be Mrs. Donald Mason. The man waiting to see you in your tent, Captain Mason. Did he give his name? No, sir. He just thought he'd wait. Hello, Jerry. Hello, Don. I expected you'd be visiting me tonight.
surprised to see me here? I heard you changed your name, but I never expected to see you wearing a blue uniform. You were always kind of warm towards the South. Not warm enough to forget I'm a northerner when it came to a showdown. Have a drink? No, thanks. How's Mother? She's been dead nearly three years. She never got over your running off after that trouble in Boston. Well, that was a matter of honor. I had to fight that duel, and then I couldn't stay and face a charge of murder. Killing a gambler over a debt isn't considered a duel. There's another matter I want to discuss with you. A stagecoach holdup? That's it. Well, I had some debts that had to be met. I was desperate. Won't happen again. I wonder if you'll ever change. Hey, give me a hand with this, will you? Untie it. Take it off. You know, if you'd shot for my heart instead of my arm, they'd be blowing that bugle over me tonight, maybe. You gonna turn me in? No. I guess there is something to that old saw about blood being thicker than water. Got something for you, Don. Mother wanted you to have it if I ever saw you again. Honor above everything. The men of our family have always tried to live that way, Don. All except you. Well, I guess every family has to have at least one black sheep. You know, Don, Miss Sanford thinks you're about the finest man in the world. And I'm just as much in love with her. I mean that. And of course, you've told her your name's not Mason, and... She knows nothing of my past, and I don't consider it necessary to tell her. Then you're not playing the game on the level with her. I want you to mind your own business. Where Lila and I are concerned, do you understand? You know the way back to Denver. All right, Don. Watch your step. Your pleasure, gents? Highball. Tall glass, no ice, just a little mite of fish water. Keep a liquor out of it. Mm. Fill it up with sarsaparilla. Snort, sure. Come on, Mac. I got to have a talk with you in my office. What for? About handing guns out to the Indians. Union guns. Who said so? I seen you myself a couple hours ago at Big Creek Canyon. I suppose next you'll be telling me you got witnesses. I don't need no witnesses. <laughs> you better lay off that bottle before you see pink elephants. <laughs> Never mind that, Mac. Let's go. Oh, you're loco. Accusing an Indian commissioner of gun running. <laughs> but I'll go with you. Everybody. Too bad, Fred. I always knew you'd blow up someday and let Joe have it. Well, Andy, it looks like we're gonna have to elect a new sheriff. One who don't go around accusing folks when he ain't got any proof. I'll save you the trouble of electing a new sheriff, gentlemen, by appointing one myself. Get rid of your guns. Well, you're taking on a lot for yourself, young fella. Who are you? You mind introducing me, Gabby? The bearer, Lieutenant Jerry Burke, is a government man. And any galoot messing around with him is going to find out that he's the shooting his, fighting his. Hold it, Gabby. That isn't what it says. Nah, I can't read very well that respects. You introduce him, sister. Oh, sing it out loud. To whomsoever it may concern, in the name of the President of the United States, be it known that Lieutenant Jerry Burke is hereby entrusted with these respective powers, i.e., police, military... Why, it's signed Abraham Lincoln. Uh, I 
guess that tells you plain enough who he is. Whatever evidence the sheriff had is just as dead as he is, Mr. Indian Commissioner. I wouldn't crowd my luck too far if I were you. Come on, Gabby. Hello, Johnny Rip. You've made a mistake. I'm Lieutenant Franklin, U.S. Army, attached to the 95th Cavalry. Last time I saw you, you were attached to the Confederate Army Intelligence Headquarters in Atlanta, Georgia. Your name is Lieutenant Morgan. I got him, Gary. Take him to the sheriff, Gabby. your books and all your correspondence. By what authority? I'm a Pinkerton man. We have nothing here for the Pinkerton office. This league is interested only in the unionist cause. I'm afraid I'll have to be the judge of that. Did you lock up that Johnny Reb sheriff? He's safe where he can't talk to a soul. Now let's see all that correspondence. Hey, dearie, here's something that looks like mighty important evidence. What is it, Gabby? An well, answer for a fort or something. These papers sure are important. What are they? Patterns for address. Yeah. Lieutenant Burke, here's something. What is it? It's from a Confederate office in Texas addressed to Captain Mason. Captain Mason? That's right. Let me see that. You see, it details all the movement, where the Rebs will hide out in the daytime and just how they'll get supplies to them. Just as I thought. This place is a clearing house for cessationist information. Take them along with you, Sheriff. Come on, Gabby. All right. I know it's going to hurt Miss Sanford, but there's nothing I can do but submit all the evidence to Colonel Gibbons. Naturally. You mustn't suppress it. Well, this is a fine how do you do. Me with the wedding cake already baked and the chickens ready to go in the oven for the wedding supper tomorrow. Our men are all alike. They can't be trusted. None of them. Always running around breaking women's hearts. You just named me one time and I've made love to you. You've been doing all the courting. What are you talking about, you old fossil? Didn't you give me an extra piece of pie for supper last night? Yes, huh? my Just a minute. Too. Just a minute. I don't know how I'm going to tell Lila, Mr. Burke. I can hardly believe it myself. Why, I've known Captain Mason since... What can you hardly believe, Uncle Henry? What is it, Mr. Burke? There's a chance that Captain Mason may be tried for treason. I suppose you have the evidence to support such a statement. I'm afraid I have. I don't believe it. I'll find out for myself. I'll see Captain Mason. All this is very serious. If true, it means court-martial and death. Colonel Gibbons, unless I hear the admission from Captain Mason's own lips, I'll never believe it. Naturally. Well, we'll know in a minute or two. Don, I don't believe that... Lila, what's... what's the trouble? Sir, how do you explain this letter? This way. Stay where you are, all of you. Listen, Lila. Just believe in me and wait for me. Jerry! Take a detail and bring him in. Yes, sir. He called you by your first name. Why? Be 
Don meant everything in the world to me. Well, you'll get over it just like you did the measles and the hoop and call. Now, don't cry, honey. He wasn't worth it. No man is. I know. My man was a no good, too. He gambled. There, now. Dry your eyes. Well, you're not packing to leave, are you? Yes. There's nothing much to go back east to, but there's still less reason for staying here. Oh, your Uncle Henry wants you to stay. He'll miss you if you go. And I will, too, so did I. You see, I never had a chick of my own. You've been awfully sweet to me, Adam May, and I do want to stay, but... I'm afraid I'm not big enough to stand the people here pointing at me and slapping at me. Well, if that's all that's worrying you, you're staying. Just let somebody try laughing at you. Just let them try. gentlemen meeting here tonight. What are you doing here, Mason? What do you want? Just like to talk over a little business with you, that's all. We can have no business dealings with a man accused of treason, a traitor to his country. Why don't you stop that, Judge? I know every move you've made for a month, all of you. So quit bluffing and let's get on to business. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, is that so? Well, I'll explain it to you. Since I've been serving the South, stirring up trouble, you and your outfit have been cashing in. If it's some money you want, Mason, we'd be glad to advance you enough to leave this part of the country. I don't intend to leave this part of the country, Mr. Carter. Too much money to be picked up around here. Big money. From now on, I'm going to get my share of it. So you can either declare me in, or you'll have opposition. Plenty of it. You're talking pretty big, Mason. I've got enough men to back up my talk. Mounted deserters. Plenty of them that'll join up any time I say the word. Well, gentlemen, what are we going to do? Cooperate, or do we cut each other's throats? Well, since we can use you, I guess it would be smarter if we did work together. Sit down. Now, your first job will be to stir up trouble with the Indians, so Colonel Gibbons and his troops will have their hands full quelling their raids. Well, your idea is to start trouble all over the territory. Right. Trouble which we will finance. And when the country's in a state of ruin, we'll take up the big mines, the ranches, everything that... Everything will be legal. The law will take its course. But we'll do the steering. His honor will see to that. Justice will be done, gentlemen. Well, I'll just send to you, Mason. Fine. I declare myself in for 20% of everything we get. 20%? That's a pretty big cut. You know, after all, you're not investing anything. I'll be doing all the work. It's a deal, Mason. Just a little friendly advice. Don't get too ambitious. You're the boss. I can do for you, Berg? No, I just dropped in for a little visit. How's business? Pretty slow in the bar. My livery stable isn't doing much better. How are things with you, Michael? Oh, we're gradually getting the Indians quieted down. 
You'd get them quartered down a lot quicker if you'd stop them from getting guns. How are you going to stop them? Any renegade white man will sell an Indian a gun. Yeah, but they're not getting guns one by one. They're getting them by the dozens. But if you could suggest any way to stop them, I'd be glad to cooperate. Mark, the telegraph office just brought this, Andy. Don't let me interfere with you reading this. We can always pick up where we left off. Another baby for that sister of mine. That makes eight of them. Now, Macklin, getting back to our problem. Somebody's been bringing in guns, and maybe you know that somebody. I'm only the Indian commissioner, Burke. You may not be the Indian commissioner much longer. Think it over, Macklin. expecting a message. Help yourself. How do you do, Miss Sanford? I'm fine, Mr. Burke. How are you? Did you call me, Uncle Henry? Mind keeping your eye on the office a few minutes, Lala? I'll be right back. Did you enjoy your ride this morning? Very much. I don't think it was necessary for you to have your men trail me. So you found out. I warned them not to let you know you were being watched. I hope you don't suspect me of anything. Well, that never occurred to me. Then why was I followed? Well, this happens to be pretty dangerous country right now, and I figured you'd be much safer if somebody was keeping an eye on you. Well, I guess it takes more than one lesson to teach some people that men are no good. First thing she knows, she's going to go through it all over again. Don't you worry none about them two. No matter how hard she tries, he's too smart to let any woman rope and hog tie him. <laughs> he's like me. Who'd want you? Plenty of women have tried to get me. There must have been something wrong with them, mentally. Is that so? Well, I ain't so old, and I got my health and strength, but I ain't so bad looking, another. Did you ever look in the mirror? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Turn persnickety women. Burke, here's a copy of that telegram, but it don't make sense to me. Aunt Sue unable to travel. Uncle Joe arriving instead with a large shipment of barley hay. I wonder why Aunt Sue can't travel. That's me. Who's Aunt Sue? I wish I knew. Well, maybe the operator made a mistake. Maybe it isn't barley hay. I don't think the operator made a mistake. I'm pretty sure that is barley hay. Come on, Sheriff. We've got work ahead of us. you fellows. What'd you bring this time, Weaver? Sharps. Army issue. I'll take two of them in with me. again, Weaver. Here's the evidence, Harkins. Gabby, find Macklin. I saw you give him the $12,000. What do you keep lying for? And you don't even know where the money came from. I don't know nothing, I told you. All I did was deliver the stuff. Who are you working for? I ain't working for nobody. You've been selling guns to Macklin, and he's been turning them over to the Indians. Nice business you're in, Weaver. You can't prove a thing. There you're looking for me, Burke. Yeah. You know a Weaver over here, don't you? No, I don't believe I do. Why? Well, it's about time you did. You've been buying guns from him. Unless you can prove that, Burke, I wouldn't repeat it. Oh, I'll prove it all right. In court. 
Senator Wood appointed me Indian Commissioner here, and if you think I... You're I'm... under arrest, Macklin. You haven't any more job than the jackrat. Lock him up, Sheriff. You're heading for a fall, Burke. A big one. Chance, the dirty skunk. He's afraid I'd talk. You could have saved yourself all this if you'd talked in the first place. Uh, I'll talk now. Him and Mason and Judge Newton. That gold crown bunch. Rifles. Engines. They got my two deputies. Bring in that gold crown outfit. We'll start after Mason and Macklin as soon as it's light enough to pick up a trail. Yeah, pretty smart. You know, two of them headed the same way when they left here. We'll pick up the trail again. We're going to find Mason and Macklin if we have to go through every town in this territory with a fine tooth comb. Leadville's the nearest town. We'll head there first. Your plan sounds too dangerous, Lala. Better wait till Mr. Burke gets back to town, see what he has to say about it. Jerry's been trailing Mason's men for a week, and he still hasn't caught up with them. My mind's made up, Uncle Henry. Please don't try it, honey. If anything were to happen to you, why? I have to, Edna May. I don't hate Don Mason, but if there's any way I can help stop this thing, I'm going to try. You're asking him to surrender. Do you think he'll listen to your appeal? Yes. I don't think you'll contact Mason. And if you do, you're going to run into a lot of trouble. I'm not afraid. It's worth trying. <laughs> So I'm loco. Just the same, I'm going to see her. Well, suppose it's a trap. I'll take a chance. I'm going to have a little talk with her. She's not going to make a fool out of me. You shouldn't let the stage get so much of a start, Sheriff. Maybe you're right. Miss Alada wouldn't have gone through with it if we hadn't promised not to follow. Miss Sanford. All right, get down. 
Get it rolling. The last time I saw you, I asked you to wait. Didn't take you long to find someone else to go to, did it? Don, I wasn't going away. I planned this meeting. I wanted to. And you're still in love with her. That's what I wanted to hear you say, Lila. We'll, we'll leave this part of the country tonight. We'll go to Texas or California. I'll give you everything you want. I know how to get things. I'll... That's not what I want, John. Well, what do you want? I want you to surrender, to give yourself up. Are you crazy? I wouldn't stand a chance. They'd hang me. No, Don. I've the promise of all the influential people in Denver. What is it, Sam? Looks like a boss. You'll build a mile back. Coming fast. That's nice work. You and Burke figure that out? Pull up! No, Don, my only problem... Save your breath. You've got a top right ahead. Sam, you stay in the open and let that posse follow you. I'll cut into the hills. I get you. knocked me off the stage. And I don't remember a thing until the sheriff came along. I wonder along. whose idea that was, having a posse trailing behind. Where did it happen? About 15 miles out, near Table Mountain. Get on your horses. Gabby, we're heading for Table Mountain country. Take care of Mason. Get moved. I never won an argument with you in my whole life. Here. Get this one on a horse. Sure, he'll take me if he can, dead or alive. And me. It's the same, I'm gonna save his life. It's not too late. This poison hasn't spread too much. And after you pull him through, do you think he'll kiss you for it? This is my own particular worry. Unconscious, Don. He'll pull through all right. He's got better than an even chance. So have you. You've just proven you can still do the right thing. It'll probably be the last time I'll ever be fool enough to do it. Tell everybody we're getting out of here pronto. Who said we're getting out of here? I did. Why? Because I think it's best. 
Sam, I'll take part of the bunch and circle east. You head for Durango and wait for me there. A week or ten days. Yes, you say. And take Macklin with you. You better get back to Denver and get some help. Take good care of him, Lila, and... and give him this ring. He'll know that... Adios. You start giving orders to me. Since right now. Now, don't fool yourself. I'm still boss around here. Not anymore. I'm taking over. And from now on, I'm taking the big end of what we get. You think you can get away with this? Shut up. When I threw in with you, I thought you were an asset. But you're a liability, and you'll take what I offer you or nothing. I'll take what I want. to my nurse and Ed May's cooking. I'm almost as good as new. I'll be out of here in a day or so. Oh, you luffy junkhead. Before I break down, I'll tell you what I think of you. Here are them things you ordered, Eddie May. Coffee, flour, and beans. Did you get me that pink embroidery thread? I ain't kicked none about sashaying back and forth twixt here in Denver till I've almost cut a new road through. But if you think I'm going into any store and ask for pink embroidery thread, well, sir, you're just plum loco. What's the news in Denver, Gabby? Plenty. Jury convicted them fellers for selling guns to the Indians. They're on their way to the federal jail now, yes. Well, that's good news. We won't have any more trouble for the Indians. Did you hear anything about Mason and his gang? Yeah. About a week ago, I had a big fight with the vigilantes. Some of Mason's men was killed, and Others rounded up. What happened to Mason? Nothing. He got away and got more men. Pretty smart fellow, that Mason. Your job's not finished yet, Jerry. I know. Unless Mason's brought in, it won't be long before we'll have a bigger bunch of cutthroats back of him. I wish it was somebody else who had to go after him besides me. Is it because that ring has some meaning? Don Mason's my brother. We're leaving for Denver tomorrow. And then? I'm going to Durango. <laughs> well, that ride to Cripple Creek was worthwhile. I told you, man, if you'd string the mason, you'd be sitting in butter for the rest of your days. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on in and wipe the dust out of your throats and we'll divide this. <laughs>
They're playing right into our hands. As soon as I fire, cut loose with everything you've got. What do you see, Jerry? Looks like the glint of the sun on a rifle barrel. Duck for cover, boys. It'll be just as scarce for Mason. Let's go. Mason, got any water in that canteen? No. It's been empty since early this morning. Keep going. We're bound to hit that water hole before long. Look, they're still gaining on us. I can't stick it out much longer. They're, they're just as tired as we are. Come on. Still alive? Your bullet only creased him. Gabby, bring that canteen over here. I wish you'd killed me instead of taking me back to Denver. You'll get a fair trial, Don. Sure, I know. I only one outcome as far as I'm concerned. I'll be found guilty and sentenced to hang. Not that I mind dying. I'm not afraid. You know that. Except sitting in a cell waiting. In the morning, they'll put that rope around my neck. You die a little bit every day. 
still have to wait. You know, in Mexico, they, they have a way of burying prisoners, all that. When a fellow's gonna be executed, they, they give him a chance to run for it and shoot him when he's trying to escape. La late Dave Fuego, they call it, I think. I know. Law of flight. That's it. The law of flight. your step, Gabby. You're liable to be next. What time is it, Gabby? Oh, no. You ain't fooling me none. Look for yourself. Hey, driver, wait for me! <laughs> <laughs> 